I forgot what a coon track looks like. Do you remember? A little hand, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it looks like a little hand. That's right. Me and Ted are out doing some trapping today. It's a really good activity to do in the winter time, especially when you get some snow on and you can see tracks. We're gonna try to set traps in a bunch of spots where we've seen coons in the past. We got six of these dog proof coon cuff traps. And we did a video on these last year and caught some coons down in Missouri on my family farm. This year we're gonna set a bunch of these up here close to the house and see if we can catch any. It's a good thing to do if you got kids and you're trying to get them introduced to the woods, get them outside, away from the dang screens and fortnights and whatever else. This is a good way to do it. Get them out here and set some traps. Check them. Keeps them out, out of trouble, I think. Seems like we're gonna be in a target-rich environment based on our past experiences. Tons of coons. I mean, every time we come in here turkey hunting or deer hunting, we're seeing gobs of coons. I would assume that we're gonna be able to find some good spots to set these traps. See the hand? Surely that's a coon, ain't it? Yeah, I think so. We're gonna set one right here. <laughs> just like that. Just right? like that. Just a little bend tree looks like. First set complete. Found some coon tracks going into this little hole in the side of this maple tree. So Ted put one of the cuffs down there. Put some dog food in it, some sardines. Now let's go see if we can follow these tracks in the snow and find some more spots to set up traps. Mmm, them sardines just kind of, that scent just kind of hangs around on your fingers. Bunch of coon tracks on this trail. We've just been walking along the edge of this creek back here looking for coon tracks in the snow and they look kind of like a miniature hand. Big den tree right here where there's a bunch of tracks going up into so he's setting our fifth trap right here at the base of it. And he's baiting these things with sardines in the bottom and then setting the trigger right above the sardines and then dog food on top of that. So after they get through the dog food, they've got to reach down in there further and fish those sardines out and that's when the trap catches them. Got one more to set in this creek bottom and then we're on to the next one. Huh? Good track right there. Yeah, coming and going. Like that, squirrels right here. See how there's one, two, three, and the one, the one track is bigger than the other ones because its foot's laying flat like that and then it jumps over here. Yep. Squirrels seem to want to go down those logs too. Coons are walking on like a little path almost. Here's a heavy trail here. Heavy trail. That's definitely coons. Big coon. All right, we're setting our last trap right now. This is number 20 that Ted's finishing up with right here behind me. We're just following the edge of this creek. Found this den tree right here. You might not be able to see it, but right there up top, that tree's broke off and there's a bunch of coons climbing up and down it. There has been since the snow and the snow's only three or four days old. What we've been trying to do is follow these transitions next to water. They're definitely wanting to travel up and down these things because that's where we're finding the most coon tracks. And also happens to be the area where the most big mature trees are at that they could use for dens. We've been following the edges of this, basically following tracks. And then whenever we hit another trail crossing with coon tracks in it, or a den tree like this one with tracks going up and into the tree, we're setting traps right there on them. And we've found 20 of those spots so far. We've only been out at it about three hours. We're gonna bail. Be back here in the morning. Hopefully we got some coons in these traps. Got an inch or two of snow last night here. Ted wouldn't be blowing down in here, no doubt. I wouldn't be. No way. I, I got stuck too many times. <laughs> All right, we're back out here next morning checking traps. Me and Ted woke the kid up to bring him along. Try to keep him busy today. We've got three different sections where we set them yesterday. This first one's got six traps in the line going down the edge of this creek, and then we've got two other ones just like it. Hopefully we got some coons to show you here in a minute. Yeah, I'm excited, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> traps are already set, we're ready to just walk out here, see, see, see how many got. coons we got, <laughs> see how many masked bandits we got in here. Bait's still in there. No, these, are, these aren't the prime sets. Got one in the trap. Do we? Yeah. I see him moving around up there. It's either we got one or I just saw one running this log. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah. Oh, got we a go. big old coon, boy. Come on, come on now. Come on now. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man, it's a big one too. Yes, this is where you found that big set of tracks. Nah, he ain't. He 
he is not happy to see us. That was the best spot that we set over here too, was these last two. Yeah. I don't see any like fresh tracks so he must have been in there before the snow even he was close must have caught him last night yeah this was one of the better sets in this bottom that we were in <laughs> now that we've got this one i feel like we're gonna have you know a few more we're gonna we should have some more in the other yeah, ones the spots are more similar to this or what there, yeah. what was different about this than the other spots that would you say i feel like on our first couple sets it took us a while to really identify Big okay this trees is trees right here Nose. yeah and we were kind of confused because we're novice coon trappers like we we found a bunch of tracks in the snow yesterday and we were pretty sure they were coons but we weren't positive yeah the more we walked around yesterday the more we were finding better and better spots to set traps it seemed like right here we found some tracks that were actually like going into holes and going up trees and yeah. stuff we'll get that one out of the trap and reset this one in a minute let's go check this last one quick yeah, baby. right on ted miller must be hunting in here a horse, not a little, big horizontal rub. That's six feet long. That's what you want to see. We uh, got a message on Instagram last night from a guy that's been trapping for a long time. He said, you got to put the traps right smack in the middle of the trails. Otherwise, the coons will just go right on by it. But if there's something in their way, then they'll stop and investigate it. And that's when you get them in the trap. So we're adjusting our sets just a little bit so they're right in the middle of the trap instead of off to the side. Yeah, it was right there, and this is the trail right here. So yeah. we moved it a foot over there. Yeah, not much, but might make the difference. Hey, we got one. We got one in the trap. Oh yeah, we that do. That one's only about 60 yards away from this trap's only about 60 yards from the way that we from away from the one we just moved. They're moving right up and down the river. This is the second coon in 12 traps, but we also had another one, a third one get out. There's tons, there's been, there was tons of tracks going up and down this thing yesterday. Yeah. Reset and go again. Yep, that's right. We'll see if we can catch two in the same trap. I guess. No luck, that's trap number 20 right there. Two for 20? Two for 20. We did have a third one in one of the traps, but he got out on us and we might have forgot to bait one of them so <laughs> maybe didn't move as much last night with the snow coming through yeah, war was saying that leon said that when it warms up a little bit a little bit better coon movement maybe they obviously haven't been up and down this thing since this snow middle of the night last night so who knows maybe tonight is the night we'll be back to check them in the morning About to hop in on the trap line for one last time. I'm gonna go through and pull all these traps today. It's going on the 28th of January today, and trapping season ends January 31st, at least for coons and coyotes and stuff like that. We just got a fresh layer of snow this morning. We got quite a few traps out here, pretty widespread. So it's been fun running them for sure. I've learned a lot about trapping. It's just a good excuse to get outside every morning and go for a little walk through the woods. So let's get to it. Something set our trap off, looks like. Dang it. Over two so far this morning. There you go. So one thing I thought of this morning was to bring this crowbar. And I'm glad I did because otherwise I'd probably be having a heck of a time getting these suckers out without it. Well, on to the next one. I think we got 20 of them out, I believe. So still got a lot more traps to check. Oh, I gotta grab this trail cam over here too. Be interesting to see what we got on that thing for sure. Oh, for three. No good. This thing didn't catch nothing. We set seven of them down through here. We actually thought this was gonna be the best spot just based on how many coon tracks we saw through from there all the way back. Haven't caught a single one in this area. Well, after reviewing the trail camera footage, it looks like we had a few of our culprits get away on us. Like I said before, this is our first time running these dog proof traps, so if you guys got any tips for us on how to avoid this from happening, let us know down in the comments. All right, it looks like we got one. Looks like we got a possum in this one. No, that's a coon. What the heck? 
thing's curled up, boy. I can't even tell where its head's at. Well, we got a coon today. This is the first time we've caught a coon on this side of the river. It's been slow over here, but the interesting thing is it's been really cold the last few days. And then yesterday there was a big warm up throughout the day. So it's supposed to be a little bit better whenever it warms up, especially during the winter, whenever you have a little bit of a temperature rise. I guess the coons come out of their den a lot more searching for food on them warmer days. So today, based on that, should be a pretty good day as far as catching coons. And we got one. I thought it was a possum because it's got snow all over its back, but it's a coon, but it's all wrapped up. I've never seen one do that before. My coon catching experience is very limited, but He's all curled up. I'm gonna have to get him to poke his head out. One coon so far today. All right, we're heading into spot number two. I think I got six traps back here. We'll see if we can't fill this vest up with coons again. So my dad and his buddy Frank and his buddy Shane are down at the house this weekend and they're out calling coyotes at the moment. But Frank put out a bunch of coyote traps just the other day and first set that he had out, he caught a huge bobcat. That was just yesterday morning. I think he's got six coyote sets out and wasn't there to go along and see it but he brought it back to the house and that thing is freaking huge it's dang near as long as him he's been trapping his whole life so it's always fun to talk to him about trapping and pick his brain on different things like that we got another one up here this is that same trap that that coon got away from us i think it was the first day that we checked him there was a coon in here and the trap circle was all tore up and he got away from us. So we adjusted this trap so that if another coon did get in it, they couldn't grab a hold of trees or like pry the train on the trees and pull their foot out. That's a big lesson on this first trap line that we've run is if a coon can get in a trap and then has small, even if they're real small trees, that it can get a hold of or pry that chain or trap on, they can get out of there, which is what happened in this set the first day. But we adjusted it and now we got a coon in there. That's number three on the day. These little trees right here are what cost us a coon the first day that we checked them. We had the trap set, I think it was right here, or maybe the chain was staked down right here. So he could get, even though he was in the trap, he could get to these trees and pull on them or use the chain to, you know, lever around these things. And that's how he got out. This whole trap circle was tore up, just nothing but mud. So he was in there for a while trying to get out, but these trees are what got him out of there. So we adjusted it from right there to right here. That seemed to work pretty good. So that's number three down on the day. Looks like we got another one up ahead. I think this is number four for us today. Yep, we got another one in the trap. This is another spot that we haven't caught anything in. Nothing really showed interest in the trap or nothing until today we got one in there. So pretty sure this is a den tree right here because there's some coon scat in there and it's hollowed out on the way up. If that is the case where it's a den tree, this thing might not have been out of that thing for the last couple days. Otherwise, I would have thought we'd have caught him. They say when it gets cold, they don't really move too much. And now we just had that little warm up yesterday and we've caught four coons already. So another little thing about this trap was he's got a hole dug right here. I haven't seen one do that yet. That's the first one that we've caught that's dug into the ground that far. But he's got this tree right here, this stump, and he was able to get to that thing which is probably a mistake on my part. I shouldn't have put the trap that close to that stump right there where he can get to it and grab onto it and try and get himself out of there. He didn't get out of there, so that's good, but definitely something I'm gonna keep in mind when I'm setting the traps next time. We got about seven more traps to check, so load this thing up and get to it. All right, guys, I'm back home now and I've been working on getting these coon hides tanned and finished up. I got one of them here in my hand. So far, they've turned out pretty well. I've been following along with a few different videos on YouTube on how to do this process between skinning the coons out, fleshing them, washing them, and now I got one final step. I got to tan these things. And for that, I have just a simple tanning solution that you can get online for, I think, 15 bucks a bottle, something like that. But if you guys are wanting to do this to the, your own hides, I'll leave a few links down in the description to some of the videos that I followed to be able to do this myself. It's definitely been a fun process for me, running the traps, trapping these coons, and then bringing them back here, and then trying to get the hides tanned up myself. It's something that not a lot of people are doing these days since the fur prices have gone down. It's something that people have been doing for lots and lots of years and just recently the numbers of trappers have been falling off like crazy just because of those fur prices. The state of Iowa actually recently proposed an open raccoon season. So instead of closing the season January 31st, it'll be open 
year round. And that's because of the surveys that they've done. Raccoon population has been steadily increasing for the last 20 years. So if you guys got time to go out and do some trapping here and there, definitely go for it. Me, Jake, and Warb ran our dog proof traps for, I think, five or six days and we ended up catching eight coon total. So we didn't catch a ton of coons, but that was our first try at it and we had a lot of fun doing it. So with that, I'm gonna get back in the shop and finish these highs out. Got them all skinned out, I just gotta put that tanning solution on them and let them sit for a while until they get dried out. So I'm gonna hop back in here and get that process started. Just wanna say thanks to you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next one.